actually started I, day before yesterday, and I'll just build on to that. So idea is not to give you too many new things, but to strengthen the knowledge which we have gained, particularly the Lee group knowledge which we have gained yesterday. Fine. So I guess for one final time, is screen visible and voice audible? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Great, 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 great. Thank you guys. So I will take up the homework portion uh, later, but I just want to extend what we have done yesterday to see how things are. Yeah, what we were trying to do is this. There is a Lee group. A Lee group is nothing but studying continuous group. From the perspective that instead of studying the elements directly, we talk about generators and generators can be understood in terms of infinitesimal operation. So the whole idea of the group was that we have this U alpha, which has to be studied in terms of I alpha S and this alpha is basically infinite small. So in the no notation which I used yesterday, this is what the idea. And this idea gives you the power that the generators play a very, very important role in terms of group theory. And these generators themselves constitute very important items. In fact, they constitute vector spaces. I am not going there. So let's just look into that from the SU2 now perspective. We did it from SO3 perspective yesterday uh, for orbital angular momentum. So what kind of matrices are we talking about? It is 2 cross 2. It is unitary, which means complex space. And it should have determinant, which is equal to plus 1. So we are talking about these kind of matrices. What will be the order of SU2? This is 2n square minus n square, and then there will be one more minus 1, which is coming from the determinant, and this turn out, turns out to be, so for n is equal to 2. So 3. This turns out to be 3. And these are exactly the same number of parameters which were required in, if you just look into yesterday's lecture, three. So how many generators are we going to talk about here? Three. three. Number of generators will be exactly three. And what would be the difference with respect to yesterday's generators? SO3 may be the teeny the generator. Complex. Yeah, so one is they are complex in general, and another is that we are talking about what kind of matrices? Unitary. Unitary dimension is? Dimension. Three by two. Two. So two by two. Two by two. Two by two. Where is the dimension of SO3 was? Three by three. Three by three. three, by three. three, by three. So of course, I mean, this is the second difference which you will find that uh, OK, it exists. And I can just extend. I mean, now the knowledge which we gained yesterday that if I want to write down u theta or in general, I mean, let's say theta vector, I, if I want to write, then it is nothing but E i theta 1 s 1 plus theta 2 s 2 plus theta 3 s 3. Now, what are s? They are? Generators. generators, right? Now, one thing which I want to say that this theta i, which is i is equal to 1, 2, 3, this is now the rotation in which space? It's a rotation in complex or unitary space. So this rotation, even though it looks like as if I am talking about rotation, hence the angles of rotation you can visualize, it's not true here. The angles which you are visualizing, they are always in real space. So SO3 can be visualized. Angles there, they are the angles in real space and hence can be visualized. Angles here, they are not exactly the angles in the real space and hence these are angular variables or ang parameters. So 
variables in complex or other books right unitary space but other than that okay i mean uh, algebra looks pretty similar what we did earlier so i can write u theta is equal to i h and now i am going to follow again the same steps which i followed in my so2 approach from the properties of unitary matrices i will just try to constrain my h and hence i will try to find s1 s2 s3 so what is s i mean this is nothing but okay right i'm writing them together theta1 s1 theta2 s2 plus theta3 s3 nothing beyond that so i will try to understand the structure just by looking at matrices what kind of matrices we have first structure u dagger is equal to u inverse what will be the condition it is going to impose on h u dagger is equal to u inverse yesterday we imposed ot is equal to o inverse for orthogonal matrices in so2 so what is u dagger if i take e raised to power ih this will become e, e minus i h h dagger. dagger equal to u inverse what will be that e minus i h so what does that mean permission Exactly. Is equal to Excellent. H is a Hermitian matrix. So the first constraint. So we have a matrix which is Hermitian, and that is the reason for this choice H. I mean, for theta one S one plus theta two S two, that it is Hermitian one. Another constraint. What is the another constraint of S U two? Proper rotation. Determinant of U is equal to one. Plus one. Now this is E I trace H. Okay, I didn't prove it any time, but this can be written. So, what will be the condition? It is going to impose on H trace H. Zero. Trace H is equal to zero. Okay, so you have got two conditions exactly like your SO two, but now there, remember, it was the skew symmetric traceless matrix matrices. Here, I am talking about traceless Hermitian two cross two matrices. So let's just try to think about it. Two cross two, traceless Hermitian matrices. Now since they are Hermitian matrices and we are in complex space, now I can I do not need to just re uh, restrain myself to comp uh, to real numbers, but I can take it to imaginary numbers or the complex numbers as well. So now I'll have to think about how many. Fundamental traceless Hermitian matrices. How many? How many three. generators are there? Yeah, so three. so there has to be three. So let's just think about it. So can you help me building? I give you the name, so of course it will be easier for you to build. But uh, we will build it and then we'll try to see if we can build anything else out of it. So okay, using real numbers, traceless. Hermitian. So traceless one can be very simple. I put zeros here. Yeah. And then I have to put number. Number one. All other numbers can be multiple of that. So what should be that? It is traceless. It is Hermitian. One, one let's say here. So one. what will be? one one? Okay. Good. Because now you look into it. This is the traceless Hermitian matrix. One. Anything else which you can build now that you have built it from the pure real numbers, can you build it from pure imaginary number also? So let me just do that. Zero, zero. Minus iota. Plus iota. Yeah. So i and minus i, and I just I mean there is a possibility of using i or minus i in the reverse way, but it doesn't affect you much. The only thing which matters here right now is that first matrix you have made out of real number. Any other real number matrix can be made out of it. Any other imaginary matrix can be made out of sigma two and the combination of the two. Anything else if it is possible or not? Sir, one and minus one on diagonal. OK, let me just write one and minus one on diagonal. So this let me just put zero zero here. Yeah. This is another fundamental one. Yes. 
you have real numbers on the diagonal ones but that doesn't that mean that i can also construct sigma 4 what about this from pure imaginary one what about this guy so let me just make i minus l Ooh, suddenly it looks like four fundamental traceless hermitian matrices anybody Sir, the fourth one is Hermitian, is it? That's what I'm asking. OK, I'm just saying that I am extending the logic here, just like you. We extended the logic here. Can we extend the logic here? Sigma three. No, sir. no. no. Why? Because no, it's Hermitian matrices. What should be the diagonal entries in Hermitian matrices? It can real only number. be real, 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 real number. number. It can never be imaginary number. So this sigma four, of course, is not a Hermitian matrix. So there does not exist any other matrix other than these three: sigma one, which is pure real numbers; sigma two, pure imaginary numbers; and sigma three, having diagonal entries, which can only be real and nothing else. So interestingly, you will find that the two cross two traceless Hermitian matrices, if you want to find out the most fundamental structure, then the most fundamental structure will have nothing but the three poly spin matrices there. In fact, if they are poly spin matrices, you already know that sigma i square. Yesterday we said that it is nothing but one. So for each i is equal to one, two, and three. Do you remember? This sigma i sigma j. I sigma. Uh, okay, I let me just use my j here and I will. Yeah, okay. So you just continue to say, except that I am using j and k. I is uh, okay since we are in complex space. So let's just reserve this i. Okay. Yeah. You did say something and I continue to speak and hence I could not listen. So please say Sigma J comma Sigma K come Sigma K commuted back. Sir, I times epsilon JKL times Sigma L Can you do it quickly for me? I on even let's just do Sigma one Sigma two. Minus Sigma two Sigma one. What is the result? The factor of two should be there. Right, that factor. Do not forget about it. This is very interesting and important factor, by the way. Two. That should be there. I mean, you will find out in any case. Uh, this you can do, uh, of course, uh, otherwise also. You will find there is a, a factor of two. In fact, if you just compare it with what we did yesterday, LJ, LK, there, there was no factor of two. Yeah, so uh, if I want to bring my sigmas, let's say some sort of in parity with else, then what I should do in principle, I should define SJ, which is nothing but sigma J over 2. If you define it like this, you will find out that SJ, SK, will turn out to be exactly I epsilon J K L S L. So, OK, instead of using Sigma J as the generators of the group in order to have parity with our orbital angular momentum operators, we just define S J as the operators. So S which are nothing but the operators are the generators of these S U two group. Now, SU2 group will have three generators. Three generators are basically three uh, 
polyspin matrices but instead of using the polyspin matrices directly we divide it by a factor of 2 so let's just write down what we get in essence we get that means that u theta can be written as now which was written as ei1 theta1 s1 remember theta 2 s2 plus theta 3 s3 so if i just want to write any of this uj theta j it is e i theta j over 2 times s j right so this is what we use as the generator s is generally used as the generator of the su2 group and what are these there are three of these so j is equal to 1 2 3 and of course these sjs are related with the polyspin matrices so the three polyspin matrices the famous polyspin matrices which you use in your spins what are they they are basically the generators of su2 group rotations in complex space complex two two dimensional space in fact you can do something what we did yesterday s1 square plus s2 square plus s3 square now i did ask you to give, i did give you as a homework for l1 square there but here i can actually ask you to help me out pretty quickly so plus sigma 3 square over 4 Remember, S one is sigma one over two, so S one square is sigma one square plus over four. So, what is the result which you are going to get? What is sigma one square, sigma two square, sigma three square? One. One. Each one of these is an identity matrix, right? So, what will be the result? It will be three by four. Three by four. Three by four three identity by four. matrix. Yeah, identity. I mean two by two since it's a uh, this. Now. This, of course, I can represent it as s square, which is nothing but s one square plus this. Do you remember in quantum mechanics how were we representing s square? That is the length squared, quantization of length. H cut s square. Yeah, h cut. Uh, for the time being, we are not using, and I will at the end I will just mention if you want to use h cut, how to use it. But for uh, forget about h cut, everything else. So s square acting on let's say spin wave function xi, what will be the result? S into s plus one xi. S into s, 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 s plus one xi. Of course, barring this h cross square uh, factor. Okay, I will just mention it. But and you know for electron, what is this spin? It is half, right? So what will be the value of s into s plus one? Three by four. Three by four. so look into this 3 by 4 which is basically coming naturally from our polyspin matrices but this 3 by 4 for s square is basically indicating the spin of the kind s is equal to half right and what will be your ms for this i mean the spin projection for a spin value half minus half and half plus minus minus half, half and plus half so electrons with this spin down and electrons with this spin up for example these things like that but the important thing if you can now see the group element or the generator is of the structure what it is of the structure which has four entries so if it acts on some basis functions in complex space some basis function so it can be a simple basis function for example like this this will result in the rotation oh sorry let me just basis function so it has to be and let's say this or another one it will give you rotation some sort of this so remember uh, yesterday we were doing this r prime r theta times r so what we were doing where r was in two dimension was x y and this was x prime y prime and this was nothing but a two dimensional two cross two uh, rotation matrix so here it is something similar is happening something similar is happening except that there are three of these instead of one 
in the SO2 space, there are three. So it is almost like SO3. But then it is not a three by three matrix. It is a two by two matrix. So it's some sort of the mix of SO2 and SO3 for you. However, the interesting thing is you can think about your group elements as nothing but exactly what we were doing in our real space rotation in complex space will give me some new configuration of this spin. When I am going to apply my u theta on my spin vector, maybe basis vector, then I am going to get some sort of a rotation of that. But visualizing it is rather dif difficult as it is a complex space. We are thus extending our knowledge of real space and taking it to the complex space. We are making it counterpart of everything. However, visualizing the counterpart is not easy as it is not in a real space. That's the only thing. Other than that, we followed exactly what we did in our previous case, SO3 case. We just came up with the idea of the Lie group and the Lie group says, uh, Lie group formalism says that I can write my U of theta in terms of E of I theta 1 S1 plus theta 2 S2 plus theta 3 S3, where SIs are the generators of the infinite small rotations delta theta 1, delta theta 2, and delta theta 3 respectively. So these are the three generators. In order to find out the structure of these three generators, we just invoke what kind of matrices they are. They are unitary matrices. The group elements are unitary matrices. And hence the condition which is imposed, the condition which is imposed is, we need to work only with two cross two traceless Hermitian matrices. So all the generators must be two cross two traceless Hermitian matrices. We built it, the most fundamental ones. Anything else can be built out of these three. Yeah, and then we see that it is that the, these three matrices, they play some interesting algebra that the commutator bracket looks very similar to the commutator bracket or the orbital angular moment. This time, the big difference comes in terms of this factor of two. I mean, this two factor is rather interesting because now suddenly what we are seeing when we are seeing this s is equal to half we have half integral angular momentum the whole theory of orbital angular momentum l can take only value 0 1 2 3 so on and so forth that means the integral angular momentum values Whereas as soon as I go to SU2, suddenly we have these half integral angular momentum values. So this half integral angular momentum values were of course related with spin angular momentum because it was found that the electron seems to be only in two configurations and not in three configurations in terms of their spins. So suddenly the counterpart of SO3 in complex space, SU2, seems to be a natural group for spin angular momentum. Price to pay? Price is that we are going to live in our complex spaces where visualization is not easy. We, we still call the word spin, but it is just a counterpart of this uh, real dimensional spin. It is not a real spin which we are talking about. It's angles in complex spaces. So at this point, I will invite questions and then I will do something else interesting about this spin. Questions? Today's class, yesterday's class, anything? There are small doubt in that uh, formation of general form of uh, unitary matrix yes. or ortho orthogonal matrix. Okay, let me go back. Which one? Previous, 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 previous. Oh, here. Sir, I was able to form uh, for unitary matrix, but for uh, orthogonal. Oh, you are uh, the most general form. Sorry, the question homework which I gave. Yes, sir, yes, that one. Ah, okay. I will take it. I will take it, but I do not want to contain myself here. 
uh, I just want to go a little bit up and then just tell you an interesting concept from the group theory point of view that what we do there. So uh, let me just finish that also. OK, OK. Yeah, so I'll take it. Up. Now. Basis functions. Remember uh, that basis functions are what? Basis functions are something which you keep on finding out in your linear vector spaces. If it is a finite dimensional linear vector spaces, then the basis functions tells you exactly the number of vectors in terms of which any other vector can be written. Yeah, that's very important. If they are not uh, linearly independent and spanning vectors, then it is not true in general. But for basis vector functions or basis vectors, that's true. Now, if an operator is represented, so in SU2 operator, Remember this U theta is nothing but an operator. If it is represented by two cross two matrix. What will be the number of vectors in basis set? How many vectors will be there or the dimension of this basis? If an operator is represented by two cross two matrix. OK, you are asking or you are telling? Both. <laughs> I can understand. I mean, uh, we, it's not about that. It is just since it's a very important fundamental concept, I just do not want you guys to forget about that. Remember, if it is two cross two matrix, then the basis functions will be two functions, right? I mean, there should be two vectors exactly in this basis set. Then only the operator will be represented by two by two. Had it been three by three, let's say I saw three. What about the basis functions there? How many? Three. Exactly, three. there will be three. The difference will be that there, there will be three real functions we were talking about here. The functions can be complex, right? The vectors themselves can be complex. So let's consider a basis set. In fact, you already know this basis set. Do you know what, uh, what have I written? One zero and zero one. Yeah, I mean, I could have written one zero zero one for this basis. I could have written this. Several books just write alpha, beta. It doesn't even matter what am I writing, to be honest. As long as you remember that these two are basis functions for this, for any two dimensional spaces. I generally try to uh, write these, this notation. And the notation is very powerful. Because what it says, I mean, if you look into it, only thing which I care about are the two kets and that the kets should be differentiated. Since we have a habit of saying that electron with spin up and electron spin down are there, so I write it. And as soon as I write it, you see that there is no mathematics written anywhere. There is no number written. So that this ket assumes some abstract notation now. Suddenly this ket has assumed abstract notation. Till I multiply it, on the left hand side from something till I multiply it from something. These kets or these vectors remain abstract. They are in complex space. Remember, they can be abstract. In real space, you still think about functions which can be visualized. In complex space, you cannot even think about it. But the bigger point is that as soon as you take the notations like these guys, suddenly you are talking about quantum mechanical linear vector space. If you understand this notation, that means you have understood the basis. Basis of the quantum mechanic. So not only the basis of the linear vector space, but the basis. That's why I just really prefer, but it doesn't mean that I, anything else if I'm writing is wrong. No, there is nothing wrong in that. You can, of course, use it as long as they are the basis functions. It is fine. The other reason of writing it like this uh, up down that clear, immediately shows if I take this guy. What will be this guy? Hey, it is a spin down, it is a spin up. So, zero, zero. Zero. so they are orthogonal, which is of course visible here rather simply one zero and zero one. Yeah, so one can think about uh, orthogonal functions. Orthogonal functions by default, they are linearly independent. And hence, we can say that if there are two orthogonal functions, then it will make a basis in two dimensional space. Yeah, I mean, something like that. But OK, I mean, this is not, uh, not about the notation which I was interested. I was interested in doing something else. Let me apply my u1 theta1 on one of this guy. 
which is equivalent uh, saying that i am writing oh by the way on the previous page i did something which is not correct and you guys haven't corrected me also sorry for that i wrote somewhere this guy this this notation is not consistent with my original notation which i used uj theta j e i theta j s j suddenly this factor of 2 if this factor of 2 is coming then what what is wrong about it i mean these two so are not consistent j thank you thank you thank you yeah i understand i mean this concept itself takes some time to sink in but yeah i mean somebody said it it's good so it should it should have been e i theta j to s j and since it's my bad so i should be writing e i theta j s j where s j is equal to half of sigma j okay now this means what so i am applying only theta 1 yeah i sigma 1 that means on this so there is a spin up basis function i am applying this rotation in this space on this one so how to apply this this is exponential applied on this one can you just give me a form which is not an exponential one so that i can work on it yesterday we found that that form e i theta 1 over 2 sigma 1 Okay, what did we do yesterday? Let me just tell you what did we do yesterday. I first theta. Ah, great, great, great. Thank you. So this is what we did <laughs> yesterday. I gave this form i cos theta plus i sigma two sine theta. Yeah, so I'm just writing. So can you help me out? I okay cos theta one by two. Theta one. Great. Theta one by two. so okay so let me just apply this one on this plus i sigma 1 sin theta 1 by 2 this will be also be applied on this one so right now let's say theta 1 is equal to 2 pi what is expected if i apply i am applying a rotation by 2 pi on this spin up what is expected sir same state no no change no change so let's just apply it so what will be i identity matrix so it doesn't affect much cos theta 1 over 2 so cos of pi which is minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 so this will become this since i acting on this state is going, just going to return that what about sin of pi Zero. zero 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 so i i will be left with this so what i get is that i get actually the same state back but with sign opposite hmm that's interesting okay let me just put theta 1 is equal to instead of 2 pi let me put 4 pi what will be u1 theta 1 acting on this guy up to same right so what do you understand from this what is the angular range of, of theta 1 in su2 0 to 4 pi 0 to 4 pi in fact it is not only 0 to 4 pi you will see that 0 to 2 pi it will behave exactly as theta is behaving in so3 what was so3 so3 was rotation in real space and there the angular range was 0 to 2 pi there it was not 4 pi yeah what is happening in 2 pi to 4 pi 2 pi to 4 pi i am getting exactly the results which i am getting from 0 to 2 pi but with a negative sign so first important difference that we are using this sj equal to sigma j over 2 first important difference it is bringing is that the range theta of our complex space is no longer limited to 2 pi but it is extended to 4 pi 
where is the range of the so3 or so2 real space that was 0 to 2 pi so that that's one not only that but it is also that from 0 to 2 pi we are getting exactly the values which we were getting earlier in so3 but from 2 pi onwards up to 2 up to 4 pi you will see that every value which you got from 0 to 2 pi will have a minus sign will have a minus sign now this is a very important consequence from the point of group theory why this is an important aspect from the group theory so if you look at it from the group theory point of view suddenly it is that so3 we have 0 to 2 pi angular rotation 0 to 4 pi in sorry su2 and i should cut this and write 4 pi in su2 and we, it looks like that there are two components i am just using identity but it is happening for every other uh, element also every element of this i and minus i of su2 you will find that it maps to one element of group so3 so two elements of the group so one between 0 to 2 pi and another between 2 pi to 4 pi and between 2 to pi to 4 pi it is nothing but the negative of that group element so you will find that something like g minus g will correspond to one element of this group which is between 0 to 2, 2 pi so it is almost like saying that i have this su2 group which is nothing but 2 to 1 homomorphism with so3 and not only that i can go one step further and say i define two member group i minus i remember it will actually have all the properties which were which are there for the group elements two elements cyclic abelian whatever s u 2 over z 2 is isomorphic with s o 3 and just to tell you what i have done i am saying that there exists a group z2 which is nothing but a normal group and i can write my su2 divide by this subgroup z2 which becomes what we call as factor so when there is factor group factor or quotient group excellent factor or quotient group and this group su2 over z2 that means a quotient group will be one to one isomorphic with so3 so you will find out while reading I mean, books that it is written at some places that su2 is isomorphic with so3 and in other places that okay it is a factor group with, which is isomorphic with so3 but we need to remember that it is that there exist a normal subgroup in this su2 such that we know that cosets formed by this normal subgroups will be a factor group and that factor group will have exactly one element which will be corresponding to so3 otherwise it is 2 to 1 homomorphism because of this angular range 0 to 4 pi and the range is such that it divides into two parts 0 to 2 pi you will get one element and then there exist minus of the, that element between 2 pi to 4 so questions on this aspect this is rather interesting aspect because from this aspect i can say that i can study everything about so3 and i will put the same thing for su2 over z2 because it's an isomorphic group and if i want to know what is su2 then i just need to figure out that since z2 normal group is there so i will make every element having negative of the element also existing in the group to make it su2 so making su2 group from so3 group becomes rather easy and simple in group theory 
what we are doing in practice is a major thing that we are talking about integral spins okay uh, integral angular momentums and we are able to construct the half integral spins algebra from that using the group theory approach questions now okay Okay, this portion is written in Afghan. It is just that the explanation may not sound exactly like the way I have said it, but ultimately Afghan tries to explain exactly what I am saying here. It has not done more than that uh, in the explanation of this SU2 group. So what I have done in essence in Lee group, I have done SO2 proof of principle. I have done SO3 orbital angular momentum is coming out as a natural consequence and su2 half integral spin or the spin is coming out as a natural consequence in future if somebody asks you what is a spin you can always say that i can make it as a rotation in complex space which is the counter part of the real three dimensional real space but then of course uh, you need to invoke the portion of the group theory to say that it is saying that i have su2 group which the SU2 divided by Z2, a factor group which is isomorphic with SO3. So now you can say something which looks abstract as well after going through this course on group theory. Okie dokie, what do I have to do next? Sir? Yes, ask questions. Sir, age of factor group isomorphic over a part of the Oh, but a simple sa part one. They go. Jesse tomorrow Z2 Bangia, it may I minus I. If I tell you that this exists a normal subgroup of SU2, fine. So if you are going to make cosets out of this Z2, so you will have cosets what? I of sorry, I of Z2 fun coset, then whatever element another co and you will have these cosets, right? Right. Sir, uh, sir, but think about it. Uh, what the way we get now, I am just asking you to remember the concepts. SU2, let's have infinite group elements, right? So G1, G2, in fact, numbering is not right, but there exist infinite group elements, right? Fine. I say out of that, I just choose two element. I minus I. And I tell you that this forms normal subgroup and this will form normal subgroup that all the cosets. I mean, in this group, what is the definition of the normal subgroup? G of Z2 is like equal to. Equal to left. Yeah, or otherwise the classes, right? Both ways. Now you have chosen that. How do you form the factor group out of this normal subgroup? Do you remember the concept which we did? What we did afterwards, I said that make coset multiplication distinct cosets. Right. First, first make distinct cosets. So each of the coset will have two elements, right? Yes, sir. Hey, nah. So now that each of the coset will have two elements. And I defined my coset multiplication as nothing but the way we defined it. Then this what we have formed, which is out of the distinct cosets under coset multiplication, that will form a factor group, right? This is how we define this. And we even wrote this. Agar ye SU2 group, hai, then colon Z2. This is the kind of way we wrote it. Say? Yes, sir. So आपका अगर आप कोसेट देखोगे तो हर कोसेट में दो एलिमेंट होंगे कौन कौन से एलिमेंट होगा एक होगा जो पॉजिटिव एलिमेंट एक होगा नेगेटिव एलिमेंट राइट तो अगर हर एक में एक पॉजिटिव और एक नेगेटिव एलिमेंट है तो दैट मींस दैट इट विल बी आइसोमॉर्फिक विद व्हाट इज देयर इन SO3 जहां पे कि हर ग्रुप का एक ही एलिमेंट है सर so, so SO3 may think about it 0 to 2 pi huh? elements. 
so somehow i am writing g1 g2 although it's infinite yeah so har element su2 kitne element ko correspond kar raha hai so first think about this just write down g1 g2 so on even though they are uncountably infinite let's say this is my l1 l2 so on and so forth har element group ko kitne element let's say identity is easy to think of ek so3 ka element su2 ke kitne element ko correspond kar raha hai idhar range tha 0 to 2 pi aur idhar hai range 0 to 4 pi so that is why i always write identity it is easy to think about that you will find ki so3 jo ki 0 se 2 pi mein jata hai uska jo identity element hai agar main aise maan ke chalu ki wo do element ko correspond kar raha hai i aur minus i of su2 and i construct cosets of the form which has i minus i which has of course other cosets will also have so let's say l1 l2 whatever l1 and minus l1 and so on and so forth then each of the element of these cosets of this group which i have constructed which is nothing but my su2 colon z2 which is your uh, factor group or which is written as su2 over z2 each of the element here will correspond to one element of so3 so all i have said is that i have mapped 2 pi to 4 pi into one coset so 0 to 2 pi is there and 2 pi to 4 pi is mapped into this coset and then there will be one to one correspondence one to one correspondence does not mean that so3 ka group structure uh, group ke elements same hai su2 over z2 ke iska keval ye matlab hai ki jitne elements aapke paas so3 mein hai utne hi elements aapke paas su2 mein hai जो स्ट्रक्चर जो कैले मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल एसओ थ्री का है वही कैले मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल एस यू टू ओवर जी टू का है दैट इज ऑल द आइसोमोर्फिज्म इट इज ग्रुप ग्रुप होमोफिज्म विच इज बाइजेक्टिव राइट तो इतना ही बस आपको समझाया है जो कि इतने में मैंने बोलने की कोशिश की है कि आप अगर टू पाई टू फोर पाई के एलिमेंट्स को एक सेपरेट एलिमेंट ना सोचो बट दो एलिमेंट्स के साथ एक एलिमेंट करना शुरू कर दो तो इट विल बी देर विल बी वन टू वन मैपिंग और अगर वो दो एलिमेंट एक साथ नहीं आप कंस्ट्रक्ट कर रहे हो तो देन इट विल बी टू टू वन होमोमोमोर्फिज्म सो इन एसेंस व्हाट डज दिस मीन एसओ टू इज ग्रुप होमोमोर्फिज्म फ्रॉम एस यू टू टू एसओ थ्री एस यू टू ओवर जी टू वेर जी टू इज ए नॉर्मल ग्रुप आई माइनस आई इज ग्रुप आइसोमोर्फिज्म विद एसओ थ्री दीज आर दू सेंटेंसेज विच आई सेट you get the point now yes sir yes sir right so we are invoking the concept which we learned about the normal groups and the cosets of the normal subgroups under coset multiplication form a factor group and that factor group ka humne wo bhi padha tha agar aapko yaad ho ki uska order kya hoga finite groups order of the factor group order of group over order of normal subgroup absolutely so agar uska order uh, ye hoga aur agar mere paas ek group hai jisme ki do hi element hai let's say normal group subgroup mein to total elements jo honge wo half ho jayenge aapke yes sir which means that now you can think about one to one uh, point agar total elements half ho gaye tab aap use su2 and su3 ke beech mein isomorphism soch sakte hain but it is su2 factor group which is isomorphic with so3 books don't write it explicitly in this manner generally and hence i wanted to explain that to you okay sir also okay. much okay yeah i mean you read it and then you figure out if you it is something is not clear from afkin then you are saying acha dekho bachcho ek cheez okay i mean i'm not forcing one i'm not forcing at all बट मुझे पता है एक चीज है जो मैंने आपको कल कही थी कि एल ऑपरेटर जो कि मैंने रिप्रेजेंट किया था थ्री बाई थ्री मेट्रिक्स से और तीन जनरेटर्स थे हमारे पास तीन मेट्रिक आई थी आई सेड दैट इन पोजीशन रिप्रेजेंटेशन पोजीशन रिप्रेजेंटेशन दैट कैन बी शोन और आर क्रॉस के दैट दिस सेम एल ऑपरेटर विच आई एम गेटिंग एज द जनरेटर ऑफ द इनफाइनाइट स्मॉल रोटेशन इन थ्री डायमेंशनल स्पेस is written as r cross k 
or R cross B. I mean, barring this vector H. I have something with me. I mean, the nodes which actually maybe a 10 minutes nodes, which is nothing but the implementation where I can show you that the operator representation of this L, which we started by saying, agar aapko yaad hoga, humara starting point kahin se kuch aisa hoga, R Z delta theta is equal to I plus I delta three. L3. I mean, this is the Lie group uh, idea concept. This is the position representation mein R cross P. Hai. Nothing to do with your examination. I'm not saying that uh, I'm going to ask any question related with this. But in case some of you are interested, I can do two things. One, I can just write down on a piece of paper. I can upload it. You can see it. You can see it. Another, I forget about that since it is not coming in the examination. So I'm not just putting it. And third, we can do it in the class in next 10 minutes, but then it is going to take your extra time. And you guys are already pressurized. So I have all three options open and it is up to you guys. You just let me know and then I will do that accordingly. No compulsion from my side. So 10 minutes, I will Okay, ek, aap ne ka, or what about others? Uh, please feel free to speak. I mean, there is no need to be pressurized here. I do not want to populate you, but a question which all the children ask later is that, sir, we have done the letter and here position representation R cross P. This is the thing that you are just saying. Sir, this is the thing that you are just saying. Sir, now we are doing it. Sir, do it right now, please. Okay, let's just do it. Yes, sir. Pretty quickly, and let's just uh, try to see if we can. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a compulsion from my side. I do not if I do not do it. L1, L2, L3 in position representation. This is what I want to do. And since I said 10 minutes, so I have a question. This is a cat. If I want to write down wave function in position representation, what do I do with this cat? Ke so this is abstract quantity. You apply R, R psi, which is psi R, and upload of course bracket notation where you write it like this. Yeah, which is nothing but psi x y z. This is something like this. So what I am going to show very quickly is in next few minutes that what will be the representation of this guy L3. And remember that this is an operator acting on this. So those of you who are still uh, confused, they can just remember that now we can talk about the operator representation. This is what I want to do. Yeah, now how to start? We will start by saying that if there exists a linear operator, let's say SO3 me me chala gaya, or my rotation around keval around Z axis, which results in infinite small rotation delta 3. Okay. And this is getting applied on Xi. So I am interested in finding out what kind of a structure I have here. And once I understand it, it is done. Done. Nothing beyond that. Kya koi mujhe ye bata paega ki agar mein is Rz delta theta 3 ko left hand side pe le jaunga to kya hoga? So bra vector side pe agar le jata hon. How do we write that? Right, so we write it as a dagger, right? Yes, that's a common way. And uh, do not worry about these uh, signs now. I uh, hope you are pretty clear that comma and this bracket notation are basically identical. And since you are doing it, I mean, I am writing it now in quantum mechanical notation. Doesn't even matter whether I use this or that. And all I need to do is I will just evaluate LHS. I will evaluate RHS. So, now I am going to invoke what I am going to do. The Lee group idea is I plus I delta theta 3 L3 acting on psi. So, this is LHS, R vector on this. Right? I mean, uh, once you write down this, I can write down this as R using the linearity portion. This is R psi plus now I delta theta 3. Both are constant. I can just take out R L3 psi. I mean constant in the sense that they are scalars. Right? And this R uh, psi is nothing. What you write is psi x y z plus I delta theta 3 R 
L3 psi. Any questions in this? We will need it once we are going to equate our right hand side. Yeah, okay, maybe I can just put this as one, this as two. Just evaluate the RHS. So you will have to help me figuring out RZ dagger delta theta three. This will be what? I plus I delta theta three L three whole dagger. Kya banega bhai ye? I dagger. Okay, very good. I delta theta three minus. is rotation in real space, so that will remain so minus I. Delta theta three and L three dagger, and then L three. What kind of matrix it is? Generators. So three. Traceless. Hermitian matrix. Hermitian matrix. Hermitian matrices. So this will become I minus I delta theta three L three. Remembering that. L3 dagger is equal to L3. This is the property of the generator we found. And now I am just going to write down the matrix representation, whatever we use. So I in 3 by 3 matrix is given by 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, nice. So the coup minus I delta theta 3. Now, do you remember what was your R's L3? It is not easy to remember, but okay, anybody? It is only the X and the Y. Zero minus, minus I zero. Iota I zero, 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 zero. And you have already seen, see, the poly spin matrices are coming here, right? It is looking like that the representation which I wrote in SO3 could have been obtained from your SU2 representation. Agar aap sari matrices but anyway, let's just solve this. Take a single matrix. Okay, okay. Uh, so, 1, 1, 1. And then what? Minus I delta 3. No, there will be no my i because i square will give you. So there won't be i minus, minus delta theta three. Excellent. And that means delta theta uh -huh. three here. So you should have zeros everywhere else. Yeah. So you have got the representation R Z delta theta three. Now, if I operate it on vector R, which is equivalent to saying I am operating this one okay i'm this matrix on x y z cartesian coordinates what will i get so this is three cross three this is three row one column so you should get three into one first one X minus X delta to the Z. X minus X delta to the Z. delta theta 3 Y. Okay. You should get this. Y okay. plus delta theta 3 X, X and Z. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, so, sir. so let's just go. R, Z, dagger, delta theta 3, R. Now, having this with Psi. So remember the way this guy has changed, this guy has become this kind of R prime kind of thing. So I can write down this as psi, I mean, look into it, x minus delta theta 3 y comma y plus delta theta 3 x comma z. Earlier it was psi x y z. Now it is psi x minus delta theta 3 y comma y plus, which is basically coming from these, these three locations, nothing else. And I am going to do the Taylor series expansion. I am going to keep first order terms of delta theta 3 because delta theta 3 is infinitesimal. So can I do the Taylor series expansion and retain only the first order term? So what will be the next term which I should write? 
माइनस डेल्टा थीटा थ्री टाइम्स वाय डेल साय ओवर डेल एक्स माइनस नाउ कैन यू हेल्प मी राइट ऑन द नेक्स्ट वन सो दिस वॉज द ओरिजिनल वन देन आई यूज टेलर सीरीज एक्सपेंशन हेयर यू हैव टू जस्ट यूज इट हेयर एंड रिटेन ओनली द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर टर्म सो माइनस और प्लस x minus x not. I mean, you can just remember that y plus y not or y plus h, whatever you call that. Tell a series expansion, simple. So it it should be what? It should be whatever there delta theta three x, and this is the second coordinate del psi over del y, and then order of order delta theta three square, and I am just putting that to see. So I am doing the first order Taylor series expansion. and i am just retaining the first order terms in delta theta 3 and i can perfectly do that because it's the infinitesimal rotations we are talking about and that's it so i have got my right hand side now so i have got three terms in right hand side i have got two terms on left hand side and i am just going to put 2 and 3 in equation 1 so what what will i get i will get this psi x y z which was the left hand side i am just trying to write down plus and i will just show you that this is what you wrote i delta theta 3 r l 3 psi so keep this is equal to psi x y z minus y delta theta 3 del psi over del x Plus x delta theta three del psi over del y. So this was the LHS which we got on the page. This so your equation number two. Psi x y z plus i delta theta three r l three psi and RHS which we have written just. Now. So equating that you will find out these guys cancel. And if I want to just write R L three operator psi, then the representation you will find out that turns out to be what delta. So delta theta three, both the sides they will cancel. You will be left with x over i del over del y minus y over i del over del x times psi. and this is the representation of l3 x over i del del y minus y over i del del x which you will find out is nothing but r cross 1 over i del and just considering the third component now remember r cross p is nothing but r cross minus i h cross del remember this for what you have read so if i consider only r cross k then this is minus r cross minus i del and this is exactly what you have got here for the l3 you can do that for l1 and l2 such that you will find out that the l vector now you can think about writing as i l1 plus j j l2 plus k l3 vector where each of this l1 vectors l1 l2 and l3 operators will be such that l operator is represented as r cross k operator so this is how we show that in position representation l operator is given by r cross p in some other representation it will be different it also tells you that if you keep on changing your basis functions you will keep on getting different representations of, of your matrices which we wrote earlier i mean we wrote l1 l2 l3 in terms of the matrices which we also use today but there can be other representations of l1 l2 l3 once we keep on changing the basis functions and they will all be the representations of the orbital angular momentum operator 
OK, questions on this point, which I have said. So last thing, sir, how to incorporate H cross? I mean, those of you who may still be thinking about it, they can just start their R delta theta expression plus I. If you look into it, this is what I wrote L. So instead of using L here, if you give L the dimension of moment, so it you will have here the action here. And you will construct a quantity out of it. So instead of starting from L, you start from L over H cross, then all H cross will be taken care of. So this is how in the quantum mechanics, certain quantum mechanics books, they start their Lie group uh, point. But please see in nuclear and particle physics, it is a very common way to use this, which is called natural units. And hence, writing it is just like saying that I am giving dimension to L. H cross is of course serving a very important purpose that it is going to not only take care of the quantum mechanics, but it is also making sure that all the dimensions are correctly written. But once you reach to the point where you understand that H cross purpose is mainly to just take care of the dimensions, then everything else, I mean, uh, it is clear to us that everything else is all about knowing this thing in QM instead of using this in classical mechanics. X cross is square, both both will have. Yeah, I mean, that will be there in both the cases. It is that L, L plus one in quantum mechanics, which is different from the classical mechanics. So H cross is just for making the dimensional analysis correct for the L operator. But I can do my uh, operation with L only and just uh, use it. Uh, I mean, the way I have used in my sections. So, OK, this is. End of the course. Thank you guys. Thank you, sir. You guys have been extremely engaging and I was happy Thank with that. You, Several points I also got corrected. Any important feedback which you want to give me immediately. Other than that, I would suggest feel free to write to me individually uh, on my chat box that, sir, this is the thing which I like. Sir, this is the thing which I did not like. Sir, you could improve upon that portion or you could improve upon this portion. Please remember the constraints which I have, which is that I have to take care of the syllabus. The five students with diverse background. It is not only the Delhi University students. Even within the Delhi University, due to discipline specific electives, group theory is not Other than complex analysis, it looks like nothing is something which is uh, same for all of you. Although I know probability in statistics is there. So feel free to write. Uh, and if you want to give any comment right now, you please feel free to give it now. Thank you, sir. You taught very well. Like, kuch kuch oh, jagah pe tez hona pada because syllabus again wohi tha, kafi zada tha, and pura karna tha. But kafi achha padha hai, sir. Aapne. Okay, that's good.